My dear friends, the book of Genesis teaches us when the world was in darkness and without order, even the Holy Spirit came and he was hovering over the waters. Still nothing happened until God began to speak. The word of God, as he spoke, things were created and life was made. Yes. That's why the book of John's Gospel chapter 1 says, In the beginning was God. And that God spoke the word and he created the beautiful world. Jesus himself is the word that became flesh and dwelling among us. Jesus spoke the word and through his word he healed people. He casted out the evil. Through his word he brought the power of the Holy Spirit into the world. Yes, the word what we speak as life and spirit. That's what Jesus himself said in John 6.63. Your flesh is useless. It is the spirit who gives you life. And do you want to have the spirit of God? The words I speak to you will give you my life and my spirit. Hold on to my word. Possess my word. And my word will give you my Holy Spirit and my life. That's what Jesus said in John 6.63. That's why Peter said in 68th verse, Lord, to whom shall we go? For you have the words of eternal life. Yes. My dear friends, in this season of Lent, we learn to fast. Today, we are going to reflect on the 40 days of fasting of Jesus. And one of the fastings that we need to do is we need to take control of our tongue. We need to con take control of our thoughts. And we need to bring forth life. Fasting doesn't mean abstaining from something. But rather fasting means bringing out life from our tongue. Yes, that's why we read St. Paul telling the leaders of Ephesians in Acts chapter 20 verse 32 And now I command you to God and to the word of His grace which will build you up. It is the grace that comes from the word and from God will build your life. So be a person whose mouth brings forth life to the world. This is the good news God gives to us. Start to speak blessings to yourself and with God's love and grace, claim it. You speak it and you claim it and it is yours. Today, make your mouth a fountain of life, says the book of Proverbs 10.11. Yes, learn to slow to speak, says Jesus. James, in James 1.19, encourage more than criticize. Seek opportunities to speak kind, tender-hearted words. Ephesians 4.32 Yes, speak the words that are good for building up. Ephesians 4.29 Yes, that's what today's reading speak about. The first reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verse 4 to 10. It speaks very clearly, set a God, O Lord, against my mouth and help me to take care of my lips. Yes. In the first reading, the book of Deuteronomy says, every time when we speak, we are prophesizing 
our own future. We have to be careful with what we speak. So three things the author is telling us. When you come with your basket full of gifts to offer to God, you need to do three things. Number one, you recollect the past history of salvation, how your forefathers were protected and saved in Israel. So you give witness through your mouth. When you speak about your past and you proclaim your faith, how God stood with your ancestors, your life is built. How God was with your ancestors. How God with mighty hand brought them out of Egypt and how God stood with them. Second thing he says, you learn to thank God by offering the first fruits to God. Not only in the past you, God stood with you, even today in your life, God has blessed you and you are thanking him. Yes, in the past, my God stood with me, proclaimed through your mouth. Today, my God is sufficient for me. That's why he has blessed me and I have brought this fruit. Confess your faith. And third, you prostrate before him and tell him, Lord, even my future is in your hand very safely and live a glorious life. Few past, present, future, everything should be prophesied with your mouth in glorifying God. Today's second reading is from the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 8 to 13. It says, the words you speak will all depend on what's filling your heart. You can change your world by changing your word. St. Paul says, the word has to be always close to you, wherever you go. Because your mind is the battleground for Satan. Only by changing your thoughts, enemy can attack you. So you have to take care of the words. Keep the word always close to you. And again, meditate on the word all the time. Third, speak the word that life may come through you. That's what he says in verse 8 of Romans chapter 10. The word has to be near you. The word has to be in your heart. And the word has to be on your mouth. That through the word, your life will be built. And he says, those who believe in their heart and proclaim through their mouth, what? Jesus is our Lord. Jesus is not merely dead for you and me, but he is alive with us. So you need to believe in your heart and prophesy through your mouth and life will be built. Because those who trust in God will never be put to shame. God doesn't see from where you come. He is God for everybody. So anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord and say through his mouth that my God, Jesus is the Lord and Savior and he will become your Lord and your savior because you have spoken through your mouth. Life and death are on your lips. What you speak, the angels will hear, the heaven will hear and it will fulfill. If you don't learn to speak the words of life, the next is you can be trapped to speak about your criticism, about your need, about what is not there and you can be in the hands of the enemy. Life and death are in your lips. So before you speak it out, taste your word before you spit out. And you can change your world by changing your word. When you proclaim Jesus is the Lord, when you proclaim that my God is the living God, by your word, you give faith to yourself. You give faith to those who listen. You give faith to the whole world. When you speak in a house, the whole house will be filled with anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel of today, Luke chapter 4, we read how in three ways the enemy attacks Jesus. Thank <laughs> you. 
If you are the son of God, command that this stone become spread. from the mouth of God. If God loves you, throw yourself down. His angels will lift you up in their hands. How dare you put God to the test? If you will bow down and worship I will give you the whole world. Crucify him! saying, make this stone into bread and eat. The word of God says, we need to feed ourselves. We need to feed ourselves with the word. So Jesus said, man cannot live by bread alone, but by feeding with the word of God. When we feed the word, the life and spirit will come out of us. Second, the enemy will attack us, not only through flesh, but through the world. He showed the grand beauty of this world, the glory of this world. And he said, you worship me, I will give all this thing to you. The word of God says, speak godly language. Take care, the enemy will try to trap you. Jesus said, worship your God alone. And in front of worshiping God and the joy you receive in God, is nothing, it's so great, it, in front of that, what you get from the world is nothing. What is this grand world? Today is that, tomorrow it's not there. My God is a living God, a permanent God, who always loves me. Yes, speak the words subgodly. But still, if the enemy is attacking you, use the word to rebuke the enemy. So the word should be a food for you, the word should bring godly presence and the word also should rebuke. Through the word you should rebuke the enemy. When Satan was quoting the scripture and said, you jump from here, your God, your angel will protect you. Jesus said, get out of Satan. And he ran away. Yes, your word should feed you the word of God. Your word, the word of God, should make your life godly. The word of God should protect you from the enemy used by rebuking it. Let's pray. God, Heavenly Father, we join with Peter and praying, Lord, feed us with your word. Make us godly with your word. Help us to rebuke the evil and conquer him by your word. To whom shall we go, Lord? For you have the words of eternal life. Bless all those who listen to this word of God. May they all be guided by your spirit. May they possess the life and spirit of yours which comes from the word. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. My dear friends, 
Sangamam Plus TV is God's gift for you for our times. Like, comment, share and subscribe. God will do wonders in your life. Praise the Lord.